Today, I'm going to show you guys how to solve a cubic equation in the standard form, but before we do this, let's do a quick review on solving a quadratic equation in the standard form. And later on, you are going to see the connections. Here, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. What we can do first is to divide everybody by a, so that the a cancel, and we will call b over a p, and then we will call c over a q. So some people will call this the PQ formula. And now we are looking at x squared plus PX plus Q is equal to zero. And now you can try to complete the square the usual way. Put the Q to the other side and then add one half P squared to both sides. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, let's take a look. If you graph this thing right here, it's a parabola. In fact, it's possible to move it around horizontally and we can get rid of the x to the first power term. So let me show you how to achieve that. And to do so, I'm just going to say that x equal to, let's use another variable, let's say y, but to move it horizontally, I'm just going to either add or subtract, right? But let's just say plus k. And now let's plug in. So we are looking at y plus k squared plus p times y plus k and then plus q is equal to zero and the goal right here is that we want to get rid of as earlier we said the x to the first power but i use the change of variable so right here we want to get rid of y to the first power term so let's take a look right here what y to the first power term are we going to get we don't care about y squared, we don't care about k squared, we care about the middle term, right? It's just 2yk. And from here, we really just care about p times y to the first power. Our goal is to find out for what k will cancel out these two terms. And now let's see, both of them are positive, so that means k should be negative. And then we have p right here, and then 2 right here, so let's just do p over 2. And that will work, all right? So now let me just erase this real quick and I'll show you guys the whole thing. So we are going to let x equals p, uh, y minus p over 2. And this will work out really nicely. So now let's take a look. I'm going to replace the k by negative p over 2. Minus p over 2. And by the way, I have notes available on Patreon, if so if you want to see all this, uh, take a look over there. And now let's just go ahead and multiply it out and hope for the best. If we multiply this out, first we'll get this thing square, so y square, and now subtract two times this and that, two cancel, so we just have uh, yp, but let's put it as py, and then lastly we add this thing square, which is p square over four, and then distribute the p, so plus py, and then minus p squared over 2 and then plus q and that's equal to 0 and as i told you this and that cancel and that's very nice and in fact we can combine this and that together and let's get the common denominator multiply by 2 multiply by 2. so we're looking at y squared they have the same denominator so let's see and that's going to actually be a negative because this is minus 2 over 4 so it's actually minus altogether p squared over 4 and then this right here is plus q and that's equal to 0 and now if you take a look right here we can put these two terms to the other side so we are looking at y squared equals positive p squared over 4 minus q and now we can just take the square roots on both sides that's so nice yeah, so it's kind of like a different way to complete a square. And we are looking at y is equal to plus or minus square root of p squared over 4 minus q. Well done, huh? No. What was y? We put y to be what? Earlier we said x is equal to y minus p over 2. Meaning that if we just isolate this, y equals x plus p over 2. So now let's play, replace that. y is x plus p over 2. And we have this is equal to plus or minus square root of p squared over 4 minus q. And then 
we just put this to the other side and we are done. x is equal to negative p over 2 plus or minus square root of p squared over 4 minus q. Yay! This is the so-called PQ formula for the quadratic equation. Here are a few things that we are going to pay attention to. First, the translation or the transformation. You see how we do the substitution so that it translates it so that in the y world, we didn't have the, the first power term, right? It's just y squared, so no y. And with that, we were able to just take the screws on both sides, so that's really good. And later on, this formula is actually going to help us as well with the cubic formula. So two things, the substitution to translate the graph, and the second thing is this result here. So now, ladies and gentlemen, that was enough warm up, and we are going to see how to deal with this thing right now. So the question right now is, what transformation do we want so that we can get rid of one of these terms? Um, yeah, it's tough, right? But in fact, let me tell you, again, this right here is just like a scratch work. It's actually possible to solve uh, the equation x to the third power plus some number p x to the first power plus q is equal to zero. It's actually possible. Uh, instead of putting down x, let me just write it as y because that's after the translation. And the reason that this is solvable is that you can do the following substitution again. What you can do is, you can put y to be some z, and then plus something. And this time, we will also have the z on the bottom. And then this right here, we just have to figure out. If you plug this back in, you actually change the equation to something with z to the third power, and then plus uh, something, and then you have z to the third power on the bottom. And ideally, if you can get rid of this, then that would be great. And you will see that at the end, this is going to be a quadratic equation in terms of z to the third power by this transfer by this substitution. And this trans this substitution is called the theta substitution. And in fact, I did the same thing with the cubic formula, the special case that I had a few months ago. So you guys can also go check that out. So if you know this, then in this case, you know, we will want to get rid of the x to the second power term. So that's the goal. So I'm going to give you guys like a guideline of why exactly that we want this to happen. First thing, we want to get rid of the x to a second power term. So we will have three parts. That's part one here. Part one, we want to get rid of the x to the second power term and hopefully we can just do some substitution and then make it happen. Secondly, once we get rid of that, we will be solving um, the third power and also the first power only, but it will be in the y world, just like how we did earlier. So we will just have to solve y to the third power plus pq, right? So I'll just put on py and then q. So now we will use pq right here. It was that said, I'm not going to divide everybody by A right away. You'll see why. And lastly, once you have this, you actually have to talk about some complex analysis, which I'll provide that later on. But the last part is we'll put everything together. So I just said, put everything together. So together. All right. That said, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. What exactly do we do though? Well, again, if you take a look at this graph, it's a cubic curve, and let's move it around horizontally, but I don't know how much I have to move. So I'm just going to start off by letting x to be y plus some number k. Most likely it's minus, but I don't know, so let me just put it down like this. And then just drawing everything to the formula. Whew, we have a times Again, I'm not dividing everybody by A because I don't want to use the PQ or whatever now. And um, if I divide everybody by A, I have a fraction. So it doesn't really matter. Anyway, that plus B and then Y plus K squared plus C times 
y plus k and then plus d equals 0. Our goal right here is to get rid of the x squared term in the y world. So technically right here, I can say that is get rid of the y squared term. Like pretty much what happened earlier. And to do so, let's take a look at each term and see what y term will give us. For the third power, remember the Pascal's triangle, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. And for the second term, that's where we get the y to the second power. And the coefficient will be having a 3. So from here, we will get 3 and then y squared, but we have the a, so a, y squared, and also the k. That's that. And then from here, the y squared term that we'll get is the first term, right? y squared, but we will have to multiply by b. So now, we have to figure out what should k be. Again, that's positive, that's also positive, so we should be getting negative. We should have the b, and we should get rid of the 3a. So k should be negative b over 3a. So let's go ahead and come back here and then erase. x is equal to y minus b over 3a. And then let me just erase all this. And we will substitute the k that we want and just multiply it out and see what happens. So a times this, y, and then we have the minus b over 3a, minus b over 3a, minus b over 3a. Okay, I'm going to first multiply this out. I will have the a right here. So here, y to the third power, 3 times this square and that, and that's a minus. I'm just going to leave everything. So 3y squared and then b over 3a and then plus 3 times this and then this thing squared. So b squared over 3 squared, we get 9 and then a squared. And then lastly, this thing to the third power, so minus b to the third power over 27a to the third power. Then I'm going to multiply it out that, so it's plus b times y squared minus 2 times this and that. So I'll just put it as 2y b over 3a. And then lastly, we have to add this thing squared. So that will be plus b squared over 3 squared a squared. So together we get 9a squared. And lastly, we have the <laughs> plus this, which is cy minus cb over 3a, and lastly plus d, and that's equal to 0. Crazy equation, I know. All right, now I'm going to distribute the a, and then I will show you guess the cancellation. You can distribute the a right now. Yeah, let's, let's do that. I think it's easier that way. So a y to the third power minus a and a will cancel, and let's put it as 3 b first and then y squared. Oh, the 3 cancel, that's nice. So we actually just have b y squared. Yes, and then this, well, this and that cancel. This is 1 and this is 3. And then 1 of the a will cancel. So we have plus b squared y. And then here we have 3 a squared on the bottom. Yeah. Yes, and then distribute the a, uh, one of the a's will cancel, so we'll have minus b to the third power over 27a to the second power. No, this was just an a, because a and one of the a's cancel, so it just wasn't a. So that's that. Yes, and now plus b y squared and then minus, just multiply the b, right? So we have 2 b squared, and uh, we have the over 3a on the bottom, and then we have the y. And then let's see, this is plus b to the third power over 9a squared. And perhaps I'll put a y on the top as well. And then lastly, just write down all that. So it's plus cy minus cb over 3a plus 
d equal to zero. And ladies and gentlemen, minus b y square have been waiting for that. Plus b y square, they cancel out with each other. That's good. Now, if we look at a y to the third power, that's the only y to the third power term that we have. And let's collect all the y to the first power term, which we will pay attention to. This has y to the first power, this has y to the first power, and this has y to the first power. But notice, this and that are actually like terms. We can combine like terms. And right here, uh, it's just 1 minus 2, so it's negative. So here, we have, let's write this. Yes. We add the quantity, and then we have the minus b squared over 3a, and then I'm going to factor out the y later. So in terms of the coefficient, that's what we have. And then plus c. And that's all for the y to the first power term, like that. Then we are going to just put down the rest. And for the rest, there's nothing that we can combine. Well, no, actually this and that, we can combine. So if we take a look at this and that, We can multiply this thing by 3 and 3. So together, they have the same denominator and then also same to b to the third power. That's minus 1 plus 3. So we will end up with 2 and then b to the third power over 27a squared and then minus the rest, right? Minus cb over 3a and then also the d plus d though. So that is what we have. And don't forget this is equal to zero. Now, I would actually like to divide everybody by a. We got rid of y to the second power term in this equation. Uh, that's good. Now, moving on to how to solve this equation. Now, we would like to call this thing p, and then this thing q. And I will just write it down on the side, so with a P and Q right here. So now, the second part, yay. We are going to be solving this equation. And as I said, we'll be using the so-called theta's substitution. And uh, now let's see. We have y plus, y to the third power plus py to the first plus q is equal to zero. I'm going to let y be equal to z plus something. But this time though, the important substitution is that we also want to have the z on the bottom. But I don't know why I have to really put. So right now, let's just put a k on the top. And let's see. If we plug in, this is the full explanation why this works. If we plug in, then we are going to get z plus k over z to the third power plus p times z plus k over z to the first power. And then plus q is equal to zero. In order for this to turn out to be a quadratic equation, but in terms of z to the third power, we are only going to get z to the third power and also c to the third power on the bottom and then no other z's. So if you take a look at the first term right here, we will end up with z to the third power. And then the last term right here, we will get plus k to the third power over z to the third power. And then if you distribute this right here, we will get plus pz plus pk over z. Now, I just want this two term to survive. That means these two terms better uh, get rid of these two terms. So the middle term right here, well, this will be what? Plus 3 times this thing squared. So let me write it as 3z squared times this, which is k over c. And there's one more term, but we don't have to worry because in fact, once we figure out this k, that k will also help us to, to use this term to cancel out that. So as you can see, First, the z and z cancel, that's good. So right here, we are actually just looking at 3z times k. And we want to get rid of pz. 
So again, the K will be negative, and then we want the P on the top, and then over three right here. <laughs> and then of course I put a Z already, so yeah, that's what the K should be. So right now I'm actually going to come back here and then erase the K and then replace that with the minus P over three Z. And that was just a scratch work. And now we can erase this and be much happier. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have Z minus P over 3Z and then minus P over 3Z. And guess what? To put this out. So right here we have Z to the third power minus 3 times Z squared and then this thing which is P over 3Z and then plus 3Z. And then this thing is squared so it's P squared over 9z square and then minus this thing third power yeah so 27z to the third power so that's the first part and then i will just distribute this we get pz and then minus p squared over 3z yeah and then lastly we have the plus q and that's equal to zero have a look people first off 3 and 3 cancel, and then C and one of the C is reduced. So this right here is just what? Negative PZ, which is the same as that. That was a positive PZ. So this turn and that turn cancel completely. Moreover, this right here and that reduces to 3 on the bottom, and one of the C is cancel. So in fact, this is a positive P squared over 3Z. Guess what? I told you this and that also canceled perfectly. So all in all, we really just have z to the third power and then minus p to the third power over 27z to the third power and then plus q, and that's equal to zero. How is this quadratic? Well, I'm just going to multiply everybody by z to the third power. And then you'll see that first term we get is z to the third power times z to the third power, so already a z to the third power squared. Next, I will take this times that. The c to the third power will cancel. So I'm just going to put that down right here. We have the minus p to the third power over 27. And then this times that, we have plus q as the coefficient and then z to the third power. And of course, this times that, we get zero. Have a look. We have this thing to the second power, this thing to the first power, and know that thing. And then that's equal to zero. That's a quadratic equation. And how do we solve that? Well, we are going to use the PQ formula from what we did earlier. And I'm just going to change the variable to capital letters because you can see that the P and Q is all over the place. So recall what we did earlier. X squared plus, let's use capital P and then X plus capital Q. And if this is equal to zero, then we know that X is equal to capital P over two plus or minus, actually negative p over 2 plus or minus square root of capital p squared over 4 and then minus q let me just make sure that, yeah that is correct so with that being said i'm just going to come here and erase this Yeah, I, I wish, this is a time I totally wish I have like a gigantic board, like five of them, so that I don't have to erase anything. So I wish I'm in a big lecture hall, but I'm not. Anyway though, our input is c to the third power, so I'll just write that down, c to the third power, and that will be equal to, check this out, the capital P is the Q, so it's confusing. So the first thing is negative, this term, which is technically negative Q, so we have negative Q, over 2 and then plus or minus open a big square root and then p square it's this term square so again it's this term square so we have q squared over 4 and then minus this term the capital q minus from here another minus becomes positive and then it's just whole thing here so it's p to the third power minus so p to the third power 
over 27. Yay! And of course, we can now just take the cube root on both sides. But here is the trouble. First question. Positive negative, do we take both? And in fact, if you take the cube root, if you consider the complex solutions, each time you take the cube root, you actually should have three answers. But uh, z to the cube, z to the third power is equal to this, and then z to the third power is equal to that. Altogether, it seems that we should have six solutions, but that was just x to the third power. How can we end up with six, six different possibilities? Well, the truth is, if you are only looking at this equation as how it is and want to solve for z by itself, then yes, you will end up you know, maybe six solutions, uh, depending on the here, right? But we don't care about z. For now, the second part, we care about y. Later on, however, the z that we get, we will have to enter the here and here, and then to produce the y. So that's the key. And I will tell you, in fact, it doesn't matter which one we take right now, because for the y, it will just be like a whole thing. What I mean by that is the following. Right now, let's just take the cube root on both sides, like this. So they cancel, that's nice, All right, that's nice. And I will actually just say, let's take z to be the cube root, and I'll just take the positive version right here. Right? So that's negative q over two plus square root of q squared over four plus p to the third power over 27. And I would like to convince you guys that once we take this z and put it here, you will see that the count you get, meaning the negative, will show up. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to call this y1 because in fact this is just the first solution. Assuming everything gets you real, then series is just the first answer, right? So I will call this y1. This right here is just you enter this to z, so we have the cube root of, in fact it doesn't really matter here, but you'll see negative q squared plus square root of q squared over 2, negative q over 2, and then this, and then plus p third power over 27. And then right here, here's the deal, minus p over, here we have the 3, and then here we have the cube root. So it's the cube root of negative q over 2 plus q squared over 4, Ah, in the square root, plus p to the third power over 27. I know the negative change on us. Don't forgive me, don't forgive me. But now, in order to simplify this, we have to use the conjugate. Hey, hey, that's where the negative comes up. So right here, the way I'm going to do it is multiply the top and bottom by this thing, but like the conjugate. So it's negative q over 2 and then minus the square root, right? And uh, I'm just going to erase this a little bit. And then we have the q squared over 4 plus p to the third power over 27. Multiply this on the bottom and also on the top. So cube root of this thing, so negative q over 2. And again, it's a minus square root. And by the way, seriously, this is very similar to one of the videos that I've done for the quintic equation, but it's just a special case. Okay, so now this is what we have. Let's multiply out the bottom. And to do so, I'm just going to keep the cube root as how it is. So I will keep that right here. We have the big cube root. But then multiply out the count you get, we just do, because this is a plus b, times a minus b, we just do a squared, which is this thing squared, and that will give us positive q squared over 4, and then minus this thing squared. Square root squared cancel, so we just have the inside, so just parentheses, q squared over 4, I think you see, huh? Yes, plus, I hope I didn't scare the dog, not my dog, by the way. All right, this is what we have, and now you see, this, and that cancel, yeah? And then of course we have the negative. And now, q 
cube root of negative, let's just say that's negative one, right? Because the country case is state around. So just negative one. And then cube root of p to the third power is p, cube root of 27 is three. You see, this part, well, here we have this three, and again, this is just on the bottom. So this three and that three can cancel. This p and that p can cancel. Early I took just the positive version, but now you will see that we get the count you get right here. So if you think about it, if we took the negative version right here, then the count you get the positive version will also show up. So really, it didn't matter which one you take. All right, seriously. But that's why one. However, though, small note, minus times minus, we get positive. Right? We get positive. So ladies and gentlemen, I we have to erase this. Uh, actually, let me just write it down at least one time. Altogether, y1 is equal to the cube root of this negative q over 2 plus the square root q squared over... No, it's not over 2. No, I'm sorry. This right here should have been over 4. It should be over 4, I'm sorry. Oh, man. Alright, this right here should be over 4. Right? Yes, that was Z. So over 4 and then plus P to the third power over 27. And then minus minus, so we have the plus. Hey, stream markers in your hand. And then this part, which is just the cube root of its count you get. So we have the cube root of negative q over 2 minus the square root of q squared over 4 plus p to the third power over 27. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is at least something for the cubic <laughs> formula. Usually once I get to this point, I'm very happy, but this is not it because as I promised, I will show you guys the whole thing. <sighs> and another thing is that it, it looks like just one answer. If everything works out to be real, then it looks like we just have one answer. So what happened to the other ones, right? Now, again, we will have to erase this. And I'm actually going to erase this as well because we are still in part two, I need more space. Wow, did you guys know what happened? <laughs> All right, now in order to produce the other two roots, I will have to introduce you guys the concept to the cube root of unity. So cube root of unity is some number, we call that to be omega, or if you want to call that w, it's okay. So that if you raise that to a third power, this is equal to one. And let's just solve this the usual way. So minus one, so this cube root, minus one is equal to zero, factor it, we get omega minus one times omega squared plus omega plus one, it's equal to zero. And we get omega is equal to one. And solve this quadratic equation in your head, you get omega is equal to negative one over two plus or minus. But let me just leave it as plus for now i square root of 3 over 2, I just solved the quadratic equation. And then we actually have another one, omega equals 1 half minus i square root of 3 over 2. So we have three answers here. And I'm just going to call this is omega 0, and this is omega 1 and omega 2. You can name it omega 1, 2, 3, it doesn't matter. All right. Here, there's a connection between omega 1 and omega 2. So one thing that you should know is, note, omega 1, if you do the reciprocal of that, so if you get 1 over omega 1, it's actually equal to omega 2. And the simplest way to see is if you convert this into the polar form, if you do 1 over, it becomes the negative 1 power, and then you actually just get the negative y value. So that's the simplest way to do it. If not, if you would like, you can just go ahead and do 1 over omega 1, which is 1 over negative 1 over 2 plus i squared root of 3 over 2. 
And simplify this, you will end up with negative 1 over 2 minus i square root of 3 over 2. It's very similar to the thing that we did earlier. And of course, don't forget that i squared is equal to negative 1. I'm going to leave all this to you guys. All right, so that's all that. And here, I told you guys that this is just y1. What happened to the other two? I will tell you, remember this one here is equal to what? This part was from z, right? Remember, z to the third power is equal to that big giant number. The truth is, when we take the cube root right here, we should end up with three solutions. The first solution was this, right? So the first solution, I'll just say that z1 is like this, uh, the cube root of whatever the number is. And then the second solution, from that little z right there that we got is technically the cube root of whatever the number is times the next cube root of unity, which I will just multiply by omega 1. And then likewise, this is that cube root of the number times omega 2. And now, here's the deal. Let's just focus on z2. Remember earlier, we have to do y equals z and then minus p over 3z. If we put z2 in here and here, that is just whatever it is. But this part, we will have to do 1 over omega 1. That gives omega 1 will be on the bottom. But then omega 1, as we discussed earlier, will give you omega 2. So yeah, right here you will get omega 1, and then this term will actually end up with omega 2. So with that said, I would like to write down the rest of the answers for you guys. In fact, it's just really straightforward now, not really, but like it's a lot, it's a straightforward, but you'll see. What I'm gonna do is I will multiply the verse z by omega 1. So I will put omega 1 in red, which is negative 1 over 2 plus i square root of 3 over 2 and then times this thing so here we go cube root of negative q over 2 plus the square root of q square over 4 plus p to the third power over 27 that's the first part and then we will have to add this with the other part but for the other part we will have to multiply by omega 2 which is that negative one half, negative one half, minus i square root of three over two times that thing, which is the cube root of negative q over two minus square root of q square over four plus p to the third power over 27. <laughs> wow. Look at that, this is y2. Uh, what happened to y3? You just changed them, yeah? So y3, it's, it's just, there's it, a weird satisfaction when I write down everything, so I will try to write down everything. All right, negative one over two. Yes, I just make it skinnier. Don't worry, I will have like a picture later on for everybody. So we have that, so it's negative q over two plus square root q square over 4 plus p to the third power over 27. And then we are going to add this width. We will have to just put a red one right here. So this is negative 1 over 2. And the red one is the width of plus i square root of 3 over 2 times cube root of negative q over 2 minus the square root of q squared over 4 plus p third power over 27. So ladies and gentlemen, y1, y2, y3. Uh, what's next? Part 3. We'll put everything together. And as you can see, now the final result is that we have the p and the q in terms of a, b, and c. All we have to do is just throwing them into all the formulas. 
I am not going to write it down. I'm sorry. Because if I try, it's just not going to be nice. So I'm just going to show you guys the screenshots right now. Oh my god. Oh my god. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is how you come up with the cubic formula, the three solutions. Subscribe because next one I will show you guys how to find sine of 10 degrees with the cubic formula.